Hi everyone, Del Winterbottom here. And now I am going to re start reading the first chapter of The Rulers Above, Volume 3, Eternity's Glow. So here we go. The Rulers Above, Volume 3, Eternity's Glow. By me, Del Billy Winterbottom. If you have the power to destroy, then you have the power to save. Harley Colspar. Once the greatest mind of all had the greatest idea. Bring all the miracles together, he thought. And then he started building a place forever. Chapter 1 The Divine Museum Outside time and space, in a unique realm surrounded by infinity, the possibilities of life, the ever-flowing scenes of aspects of many areas of many worlds, endless possibilities of random lives flowing eternally in streams of ever-changing images, also, in this exceptional realm, an unfixed establishment, a museum. Not just any museum, though. Not the typical museum where you would expect to find just any old piece of history or any ordinary, famous work of art. No. This was a divine museum. And if you entered this particular place, you would not find anything of human skill. Alcapunctus was the name of this divine museum. Up a flight of wide steps, through two huge gold doors, the first room of wonders, large, spacious and full of gold's brilliance, ten gold pillars flanking, Gold floor, gold walls, gold ceiling and gold doors, polished and mirror-like. Not everything in here was gold. In the centre, the striking fountain of Ina Euthorio and her twin sister Mela. The fountain's two statues of the sisters were rich in their detail. Ina posed, her wings high, right hand outstretched to any that enter through the front doors. Content eyes, heartening smile. Behind Ina, on the other side of the sacred fountain, her sister posed in the opposite direction. Wings low, hands on chest, looking up, sinister eyes, wicked smile. Clear water spraying above the sisters, splashing and trickling in half of the fountain's base. On Ina's side, the water was calm, sparklingly beautiful and pure, but on the other side, chaos roiled. The fountain also sprayed a black lumpy liquid into the other half of the base. From a seething jet black pool, whispers and faint screams could be heard on Melha's side. The fountain's pool of clear water and mysterious black substance equally shared the base, and neither would mix or cross over to the opposite side. Past the fountain, at the far end, a large alcove in the middle, arched at the top, with three double doors inside, one in the middle on the left side, one in the middle on the right, and one in the middle at the front. Before the fountain, near the third pillar on the right, a statue depicted the angel Apothera with his long cape and broken armour, bracing his left knee bent forward, right leg stretched back, face expressing pain and tension, eyes closed, cuts and scars over the body, left wing half missing, many quills missing from the right. The left arm appeared limp and the right looked strong holding up a real covering shield, encrusted with shining iron quills, the front like two furled wings. 
on the left near the fountain's corner and closer to the fifth and sixth pillars a grail full of tears covered in diamonds glimmering and shining so effectively like a star on a small round table of clear crystal past the fountain on the left near the seventh pillar a high statue depicted the third pipal miraclesia standing wearing a large gown downhearted empty eyes open away on the right past the pillars and to the far wall a comfortable bench and a remarkable mahogany piano smooth and sheening upright and towering and it depicted the second pipal divinitus Gold strings and hammers symbolized his organs within his exposed within his exposed stomach. The piper looked middle aged with slight wrinkles on his long expressionless face, wings furled, eyes closed, hands of long fingers on both sides of the music shelf. He had no ears. Near the third pillar on the left, a quill-shaped sword halfway in a block of stone, handle side up. And we'll continue the rest in the next video.